What is going on, fellow obscurist tourists? Today I come to you from a place that I have long been wanting to come visit, but for one reason or another I just haven't been able to make it out here. But today I'm here. I'm here in Bowmanville, Ontario, and right behind me, this vast property. This is the former grounds of Camp 30. Now, many people have mistakenly referred to Camp 30 as Camp X, and that just isn't true. They're two very different places, but both played integral roles during World War II. Camp X is about a 30 minute drive just down the road, and it is an infamous, or it was, it was an infamous spy training camp for the Allies heading over to Europe. Camp 30, on the other hand, was a POW camp, and it was here that German officers and German soldiers alike were imprisoned to keep them far from the front during the ongoing fight overseas. So let's take a look around. So this entire place and all the buildings on it were set to be raised by the government a few years back, but after much deliberation, there was a complete about face, and in September 2013, Camp 30 was designated a National Historic Site of Canada. So let's get into the history, a very important history of this place. And it's one that I would like to say has been forgotten through time, but uh, I can honestly admit I was never taught this in school. No one ever mentioned Camp 30, and it's a very important part of Canadian and World War II history. So here's the million dollar question you're no doubt asking. How the heck did a POW camp for Nazis come to exist on Canadian soil? Well, early on in the war, it became evident to the British that a detention center for German prisoners of war needed to be established, especially for the officers. Adolf Hitler's bombing campaign in England had raised the possibility that England could be invaded by the Nazis and that German prisoners might be set free to return to battle and not just return to battle on mainland Europe, but actually issue commands from within Britain itself. Because of this, the camp needed to be in a secure location, but still remain within a Commonwealth country, but as far away from Britain as possible and Camp 30 satisfied all these criteria. Now, the German officers were sent here, and of which 880 were high-ranking German officers, were sent here to Canada, and ironically, it was just down the road from what I previously mentioned, Camp X. So you had a bunch of German officers here, and a bunch of Allied spies just down the road. Couldn't write a better story. Now, the history of this property starts long before World War II. In fact, up until 1922, a man named John H. H. Jury had owned a 300-acre farm north of Bowmanville, which he called the Darch Farm. He decided to donate it to the Ministry of Education for a school to house boys who were getting into trouble and considered to be unadjusted. The school was to become known as the Ontario Training School for Boys. Several buildings were constructed, and the site was completed and officially opened in 1927. Classes continued at the school until April 1941, when the Canadian government announced that it was taking over the school for use as a prisoner of war camp. Canadian officials had just seven months to turn the boys' school into a POW camp, 
Though the school was built to hold many people, officials had many tasks to complete before prisoners could even be moved in. They had to build barbed wire fences 15 feet apart, guard towers of which nine were built, as well as gates and barracks for the Canadian guards. Those tasks were completed in late 1941, just as the prisoners were arriving. This is the unassuming front gate to Camp 30, and prisoners would have traveled right along this very road. They would have been driven right around that bend and hung a right in order to enter the main grounds of the camp. And in all honesty, I could think of much worse introductions. This, I assume, once held an old sign right here at the entrance to Camp 30, though I can't imagine the camp ever had a sign, so one could easily assume this was used for St. Stephen's High School in its later life, but it most likely predated Camp 30 altogether. The main school building burnt down some years back, but my understanding is that Whatever stood on this very foundation, which was most likely used as POW barracks, was torn down on purpose during a brief period in which the government planned to demolish everything here on site. And this road right here is the very road I showed you earlier, the one leading from the gate into the camp. This is the first real glimpse prisoners would have had of the camp as they rounded the corner between that row of trees. This perspective from the west side of Camp 30 gives you a pretty good idea of just how big this property is. Also, due to its proximity to Lake Ontario and this being basically open farmland, I can only imagine how cold it must have been through the winters here. I suppose this building over here on the right, which had an indoor pool, probably got lots of use during those long, dark, frigid days of January and February. One of the most famous incidents at Camp 30 took place here at the mess hall, otherwise known simply as the cafeteria. This incident has since become known as the Battle of Bowmanville, and in many ways this battle took place in the most Canadian way ever. But bear with me, I'll get to that. In October 1942, at least 1,500 prisoners revolted against the Camp 30 guards after the POWs were ordered to be shackled. This change in procedure at Camp 30 came in response to a then-new German commando order overseas, which required all Allied prisoners of war in German hands to be shackled. In response, Camp 30's Lieutenant Colonel James Taylor had asked German senior officer George Fremel to supply 100 prisoners to volunteer to be shackled. When he refused, Otto Kretschmer and Hans Hafle were then asked to provide volunteers, but they too refused. Taylor then ordered the guards to find 100 German officers to be shackled by force. Kretschmer and others then barricaded themselves inside the mess hall arming themselves with sticks, iron bars, and any makeshift weapons they could find. 
About 100 Canadian soldiers were requisitioned from a base in Kingston, and they, along with Camp 30 guards, stormed the mess hall using only ice hockey sticks in order to maintain fairness in keeping the two sides evenly matched. I mean, come on, how Canadian is that? After several days of brawling, the Canadians then brought high-pressure water hoses and soaked the cabin thoroughly until the prisoners agreed to come out peacefully. Now, it must be noted that before this incident at the camp, relations between the German soldiers and camp guards were more than cordial. In fact, the German prisoners were said to have been treated better than the actual citizens of Bowmanville itself. The prisoners often played tennis, ice hockey, and even drank and played poker during that first year at the camp leading a very different and comfortable daily life than the ones their countrymen were leading back home during wartime. The prisoners even continued to receive pay from back home in Germany, not to mention Christmas bonuses from Hermann Goering, commander of the Luftwaffe. This allowed the prisoners to acquire a vast amount of goods. Even more, the prisoners were allowed to take day trips outside of the camp, solely based on honesty and honor. What a different time in the world it was. This building right here was the Camp 30 Infirmary, but was also known as the General's House because, well, it's where the German General's quarters were. The Canadians, as I've explained, allotted much courtesy to the German prisoners while they were housed here, and that even extended into giving high-ranking officers separate housing from the other German POWs as a sign of respect. This depression in the ground over here on the northern edge of the property is where, I believe, the main school building once stood. Like most other buildings here on the property at Camp 30, it would have served as barracks for the prisoners. Unfortunately, the building burnt down about 15 years ago, and all that remains is this depression in the ground. Interestingly, one of my best friends told me she actually attended St. Stephen's High School when it was at this site in the 1990s, and I had absolutely no idea until I told her that I was making this video. Pretty cool, huh? Well, anyone who knows me well knows that World War II is pretty much my favorite subject in the world ever. So this was a very, very, very special place to visit today for myself and hopefully for you. Hopefully you learned something and you learned a little bit about Canadian history 
and Canada's role in World War II because a lot of my American friends are like, Canada was in the war? Yeah, yeah, we were. We were there before you. We also had this place. So take what you will from that. Anyway, it's Obscurus Tourist from Camp 30 in Bowmanville, Ontario. Wishing you well, stay beautiful, follow my page, and until the next adventure, see you later.